Welcome to the latest edition of the Westwood Living Podcast. We're coming to you from Walpole, officially, right? Walpole, yes. We are in the headquarters of Ian Brown Land Design, and joining me is... Ian Brown. ...himself, the man who owns the business. A Westwood native, yes, though, right? I am, and yes. What's beautiful about this conversation is that I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions that I truly don't know the answers to. So it's just to get to know you and understand better about where you came from, what you do, and your connection to the Westwood community and beyond, because it's really grown beyond that. So you run a, a land design company. And I guess, let me start with this. What drew you to this business from the outset? Well, we moved to Walpole just because we needed space. A lot of our clientele, and most of it, is still in Westwood. So uh, our roots are in Westwood. I grew up in Westwood, going to Thurston and the high school. My family had a few acres on Clapboard Tree, which is where our family home was. And when we were younger, we had landscapers doing the yard. And as I got older, I would ask my dad, you know, isn't this something I could do? Or well, how much are you paying these people? Or, you know. And then he encouraged that because, you know, taught me how to change the oil and fix a flat and do the trash. And then the yard work is next. So it kind of lined up really well. And so I enjoyed doing it at our house. It was extensive, a couple acres. And then just wound up getting a few family friends that lived in Westwood to uh, also uh, let me do some work in their yards. And it really turned out to just be summer work. How old are we talking here? Is this super young? Is this like 12, 13, this is, 14 This is so? 12, 13, 14 yeah, at my right. house. And, Love it. Uh, and then through high school, kind of just did it You know, in the summers, when, in the growing season, learning as I went. I worked for another little landscaper that used to do our yard. Take me out once in a while, Mike Schmidt. He's still doing it. And now I look back, it was kind of that summer of senior year in high school where you, know, you want to make as much money as you can mowing lawns and doing all that stuff uh, before college. And so I did, but people kept asking me to do work even late into the fall season. So I'd come home from Worcester where I went to school and would work you know, Mondays and Fridays because uh, I had four day work weekends, I called them. And I just carried it through college. And that's kind of where it started building. So a certain part of this though is learning the art of land design yes. and the nitty gritty elbow grease that goes into it and understanding that you're going to have to build the staff, but you've also got to learn as the owner of the business, how to run a business. Correct. So as that evolves, yep. how do you learn more about operating and owning a business and making sure that all this hard work you're putting in pays off? You're right. Yeah. When you're doing it, you're nervous because I think it was while in high school, it was just work. I do something for a day, I get paid, the clients are happy, they get good value, I get paid, I pay my bills, I put something in my pocket, that's it. But then it turns into a business, right? As college started, I started learning how to hire employees, you know, one at a time, and then negotiate contracts with clients, and focus on maybe more of their maintenance needs and seasonal, but at that time it was more, they were asking me to do more, pushing the envelope for me. I wasn't really aware of rock walls and patios and stonework and plant design as far as layering bloom times and schedules. And these are all things that you just learned over time. I didn't go to school for it. I just acquired those skills in the field. Trial and error and figuring out what works. I do think uh, over that time I developed a knack for it. And that's what's moved us from more of a maintenance-based company where I started to more of the land design, where you can be more creative, work with clients directly, and, and evolve a space. And that's what we really love. Yeah, I find it fascinating that it is a combination of muscle, right? You're yeah. getting your hands <laughs> dirty and everything <laughs> yeah. else, but also artistry because yeah. you do have to have an appreciation for yeah. floral arrangements and the seasons yes. and what pops when and what plants look good here. So that's a unique combination. I think it's yeah. hard probably to find someone who's got the ability to you know, roll up their sleeves literally and get your fingernails dirty, but at the same time say like, this is going to look gorgeous in August. Yeah, I know when we meet with clients, you know, I try to preface, it's a bull in a china shop before we make it look really pretty. So we're bringing in excavators, skid steers, dump trucks, and we blow up a space and it looks nasty and it's awful, but the end result's awesome, you know? And so the before and after pictures uh, really help because you know, you're really ruining a space to bring it back to something that people, you know, envisioned and you designed and you sketched and all that. So it is a mix of that brute strength with dainty yellow flowers in the spring. You know, it's kind of like a mix. And also managing your clients, because like you said, you're uprooting what they yeah. take to be their space. So that takes some experience. It does. And it's, a, it's a leap of faith for them, right? You know, when I started, I was, I was younger. I was teens, early 20s. And now you're talking about ruining a space for people and even above that 
money, right? And these people are spending thousands of dollars, hard-earned money, and trusting that with you, that you're going to do right uh, and develop a, a property or a space and deliver on it, right? That's going to be exactly what they wanted or better. And and that's a big leap of faith that they've put in me. And, uh, and I'm very, very fortunate and don't take it for granted because it's helped me get to this point now. So what do you think sets you apart, you and your business and the people who yeah. work for you? Because not only yeah. do you have to be the head of this business, but you got to make sure that everybody who's working for you is kind of in line. They kind of are following your values and they understand everything that you stand for. So how do you keep all that in a straight line and what sets you apart from your competition? You know what it is, is we've pivoted and, and COVID, you know, two couple years before COVID, but COVID really put it in perspective and focus is we don't want to be the largest company and we don't want to do absolutely everything. We know what our core skill set is and we stick with it. Our skills are smaller and deliver big impact to keep the quality control and keep my guys in line and girls that when we engage in a project, we're focused on the end result. And that is to develop and deliver a great result for clients. The quality comes in where I'm on site a lot of the time. That means I can't be doing 3,000 lawns, although that's a business model that works for some people. I have to be on the projects and the maintenance of things to keep an eye on things and show the staff exactly how I go through it and I have a process and why we do it that way. It's very important that they follow that because it keeps with uh, it keeps our quality consistent. If you're just a maintenance client, and we take those skills and, and that same thing we apply to our projects. I'm on site a lot of time, which handicaps us because we can't grow exponentially. But as we learn, and my guys learn, and my girls learn the process, we can have multiple projects going on at once, and that's what we found. We can scale and keep quality in check. Well, one thing we all know is that you're not in Florida, so this isn't something that. <laughs> The yeah. outdoor yeah. floral and fauna is going to be popping up throughout all 12 months. So how do you manage that as a landscape right. business when you're in New England? It's tough. Our seasons have changed such that we work all the way through you know, early January now. And that's a lot to do with protecting plants and getting everything ready for the winter season. And then spring starts early. You know, We have crocuses out right now. It's uh, not even March. We also have uh, forsythia and witch hazel popping already. So what's nice about our shorter winter season is it gives us time to prep for our clients spring, summer, and fall seasons. What projects are we going to be doing? Are we sourcing plant material, stone, all those items? Then the two or three months off uh, in the winter lets us set up for the growing season. What have you learned about the, the stone work and patios yeah. and the construction of walls and that kind of stuff? What's nice about being in Westwood is it's got history. I mean, it's a very beautiful town. It's got hundreds of year old homes mixed with brand new construction. So what I've been able to do is grown up through the town. I have friends and family that own homes there. I have clients that own homes there. And some of these homes are hundreds of years old. So when you're renovating a space with a home that's two, 300 years old, and there's some elements in the landscape that are equally old, you want to embellish those and enhance them. So our skill set brings old granite, old turn of the century stonework, and we influence that with new garden setting, new stone, but we blend the two versus another approach, which would be, and you see it in new construction, which is you know, brand new everything, you know, pavers and granite blocks and things that are a bit more rigid. They have their time and place, and certainly in Westwood has homes like that, but Westwood's unique where it has a blend of both, and I think we really have a adept ability to really curtail some um, trends for some homes and embellish others, right? So some things you want to do and then focus on some areas of an older home uh, and then and enjoy those gardens. And then the stonework for newer ones, you want to highlight the new trends that are in landscape. So the stonework, like foliage and in, in landscape, you have such an array of materials you can use. And the older stuff is really fun to work with. Uh, and the new stuff is equally fun. But finding that balance between the two and then what properties respond to certain materials, we really enjoy doing that. And Westwood's a specific town for that. So what I've liked about working with you and other people who are a part of this publication and you know part of this community that we're building is that you come to me, you take for granted your expertise. You know, you're like, well, this is what I do for a living. Yeah. But you have an opportunity here, and I actually loved what you did over the last couple of months where you said, hey, here's some tips for the winter. Yeah. Because there are things that you know that people don't even think about yeah. that they need your guidance on. And by the way, you have one of the best lines we've ever had in here that says, do not forget to wrap plants with deer protection. Your garden isn't a sizzler for bamboo. Uh, <laughs> exactly. 
Well, so many times in the spring we get calls from new clients, prospective clients, and 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 usually not our current clients, but where plants are decimated over the winter, and especially a winter like this where it's been no snow, clear as day, all rabbits and deer have the full run of your garden and there's no protection, no snowpack. So people will often have us over and say, well, what's going on with our our evergreens? You know, well, they're, they're getting eaten by deer, you know, four or five, six feet up. And then that's why you see these toothpick or lollipop type trees around or, and shrubs the same way. So a lot of the time in the fall, you really got to focus on protecting your plants over the course of the winter. There's not less activity outside. You're not outside as often. There's less traffic as far as uh, what's going on in your garden and your landscape. So you'll find that people will be surprised in the spring that there's been damage to their plants. So it's been really important that people take note and protect their plants for the winter. It's important for people to be aware of your brand, who you are, and I appreciate your support of this publication, but generally speaking, I would guess it's a big word of mouth industry, yeah. right? Somebody hires you, they love what you did for their property, and then they say, oh my God, you gotta call Ian. Is that basically the nuts and bolts of how your business really grows? Absolutely, when we were younger, I really wanted to build by volume, right? I thought that, that was a business model I understood. That's all I saw represented in the industry. Uh, but quickly, I found that the best way to gain quality relationships, which is, can I deliver something really of quality, spend my time and care with a client, and could they put that faith and judge and, and character in me and do the same? It's got to be word of mouth, you know? I, and I vet my clients through who their friends are, what clients referred me to them, and vice versa. No one's going to recommend me if there was an issue with our service or if we failed. And we, we stumble here and there. We're learning, right? But by doing right by clients and standing by your work, we've been able to maintain these relationships for years. And I think you're right. That's the best way we found moving forward is word of mouth. Great. And that's what I'm looking to build, right? The more I build a network Absolutely. and the more I get a chance to interact with business owners like you, I connect you with Rick, Aaron, with Lauren and yes. say like, hey, let's all work together and see if we can grow our businesses. So it's ianbrownlandscaping.com, correct? Yes. That is how yeah. you take your first step and learn more about what Ian does. This is going to be a busy season. It's coming. I'm it's excited. probably coming sooner it's, than you It's expect. here already. We're already getting calls, so uh, we're out there. That's cool. I really appreciate the time and the support. And everybody reach out to Ian if you've got some landscaping and really land design visions because yes. that's what he does. He really looks at your space from a very objective point of view and he'll give you a vision that you may, have, may not have even expected. Yeah. And you want the expert to come in and take a peek at what you've got going on on your land on your property and make something special. So once again, Ian, thanks a lot for the time. I Thank appreciate you, Tom. it. Appreciate it. Right. 